humans permanently living on Mars, the absolute equality of the genders, and North Koreans exercising full freedom are some of the many likely events you'll never get to witness because you're gonna die. All of us are in fact going to die. If you live each day as if it was your last, someday you'll most certainly be right. We have a maximum lifespan of around 120. This has been the harsh reality that we've always known. But now a few new know-hows we have about the human body and also dying are changing this fact. And for the first time ever, humans may be able to live forever. We now have the ability to reset the age of an entire animal. This perhaps is immortality. By living forever, I mean pushing the boundaries of humanity's age to 1,000, uh, 5,000 and even beyond. And that's gonna happen while you don't get sick and also while looking like your absolute best. As good as you look now or even as good as you looked when you were 20. Immortality has been the dream of human beings and it's been a story part of our mythology since the earliest times. The most exciting aspect of all of this is that this science does not apply some unfamiliar uh, chemical to your body so that you could extend your life and perhaps be immortal. It actually uses the very basic building blocks of the human body to fight against humanity's biggest fear, which is dying. I don't want to die. In I don't want to die. Ah, I don't want to die. Just to give some disclaimer before explaining how the science of this works, uh, you should know that despite this technology that can potentially make you live forever, uh, you might still die if you get into a car accident or drink poison and your body gets damaged beyond repair. What this new technology does is basically keep you from all of the side effects that come with being an old person. So to explain how we got to the point of experimenting with making humans live forever, I first have to explain why humans die. As you probably remember uh, from science class, the human body is made up of these tiny things called cells. Uh, some of those cells are blood cells, others are nerve cells, and we also have muscle cells. What these cells do is very simple to understand. They make up our nervous muscles and also blood. But the human body has this unique type of cells called stem cells, uh, which our body uses as an ingredient to make any kind of cells. And stem cells are actually the thing that gave us a lot of clue about human's potential to live forever. And we got those clues because the lack of stem cells is the main reason why humans age, lose their hair, their childhood spark, and eventually die. When we were babies, we all had an abundance of stem cells, and we were using them to make new cells every day. But as we age, we slowly lose our stem cells, and also at the same time, our ability to make new cells. Thus, our skin starts to fall apart, and we become tired because we are functioning on cells that are weak and eventually one of our organs fail us and we die. But it seems like this cycle of the human life is about to reach its fine conclusion because we are getting to a point of getting an unlimited amount of stem cells through different techniques. Because of years of research conducted by companies like Google and Unity Technologies, in addition to billions of dollars invested into the industry by people like Jeff Bezos, we now have a way to increase the number of stem cells in living things' bodies by using this coenzyme called NAD+. Interestingly, NAD+, is something we all had when we were born, but as we grow up in age, we start having less and less of it, and at the end of our lives, we wouldn't have enough of it to be making stem cells. But now scientists have found a way to increase our NAD+, which is gonna lead to more stem cells, and that's gonna lead to an unlimited life with a bunch of healthy cells. One of the early experiments done to see if more NAD plus actually leads to more stem cells was done on mice a couple of years ago. Look at these mice as an example. They are twins. They were born at the same time 20 months ago, which is something like 70 to 72 years for humans. But the one on the right was given a treatment that boosted his stem cells, and because of that, he was acting as if he was in his 20s in human age, even though he was in his early 70s, uh, still in human age. NAD plus is not the only way scientists is used to increase the number of stem cells in living things' bodies. They actually have been able to directly transfer stem cells from one body to some other body too. Not only that, but there is this Japanese scientist who came up with a system called Yamanaka factors, which is basically a way to convert your normal cells, like nerve cells and blood cells, to stem cells. And 
the scientist actually has managed to win a Nobel Prize because of this discovery. Because of what this guy found, in the future we might not need donations uh, from younger people uh, to be able to get stem cells. We can't just use our own nerve cells and blood cells to be extending our lives. If this gets perfected and approved, humans will get to a point of being able to live their life as long as they want and also reset their age back to 20 or 30 whenever they want to. Scientists have rejuvenated the skin cells taken from a 53-year-old woman, making them equivalent to those of a 23-year-old. So this kind of goes without saying, but this kind of science comes with its own ethical and uh, social questions we should be able to answer. Questions like, is it a good idea to keep the generation that's pretty much harassing the environment as long as basically forever. Isn't overpopulation going to be a problem if we're all gonna stay here while also giving birth to new generations? And more importantly, uh, will this be creating new hierarchies between the rich and the poor? Uh, the rich basically living as long as they want and the poor barely even making it to the age of five. But the sheer idea of uh, living forever coming to our daily conversations is just downright crazy and it really makes you think how different the future could and will be.